Okay, we'll call a meeting to order as the City Commission for August 1st. Uh, we have a quorum. First thing on our agenda would be uh, invocation with us. Uh, Christine Gilson with Trinity Episcopal Church. Would you lead us? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your word you have given us a vision of that holy city to which the nations of the world bring their glory. Behold and visit, we pray, El Dorado and all the cities of the earth. Renew the ties of mutual regard which form our civic life. Send us honest and able leaders. Enable us to eliminate poverty, prejudice, and oppression, that peace may prevail with righteousness and justice with order and that men and women from different cultures and with differing talents may find with one another the fulfillment of their humanity. Send down upon those who hold office in this city the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. I have the Pledge of Allegiance. Join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We have personal appearances. Uh, Jean Plummer and Linda Baines with the Frontier Western Celebration. Thank you very much. I'm Jean Plummer, 1121 Douglas Road, and we're here tonight to reiterate uh, an invitation to all of you to the community for the Frontier Western Celebration, which is this week. Ten, ten years ago, we started this. This is actually Herb's idea. <laughs> we can blame it on him. He had just come here and, and uh, we had a meeting and he mentioned a rodeo and from that we went to a bull ride and actually we're having a bull ride and a rodeo this year but it's a little different kind of rodeo. But the activities will be Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday and I'll let Linda tell you what all they are. It's kind of exciting to see the, the fencing up and the stages up and the arena will be coming in a couple days but it's going to start Thursday night with the ranch rodeo. Those are um, 10 to 14 teams of just Butler County Cowboys and it's what they do every day and so that and it, but it's timed so that'll be fun. Friday night starts the concert, mutton busting and uh, uh, the bull rides Saturday the same. We've also got arts and crafts in the park and horseshoe tournament and stuff going on at the museum and then again more mutton busting, bull riding and another concert. Sunday is the Cowboy Church and then the trail ride out the lake. Tell them about our horseshoe guy. The horseshoe guy this, that started this a couple years ago is in at the World Horseshoe Tournament this week. He had to qualify last week. He took first in his division. He had 78 percent ringers. So he's pretty darn good. So we're cheering him on to win world. We're sorry he's not here, but he's doing a great job. Wow. Making yes. El Dorado look good, we hope. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, and we hope you all come. And yes. you have a, I gave you each a, a copy of the agenda there so you'll know what's going on. And uh, for people who are, are watching on TV, we're at uh, FrontierWesternCelebration.com. So. .com. Things Thank get started much. at the Civic Center. Pardon? Things get started. It's all at the Civic Center, right? Downtown, pretty much. Yeah, except for the arts and crafts and right. the horseshoes. Yeah. Yep. And the lots gates. Of the, lots of events. The gates the open center. at 6 on Thursday, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And you get the whole weekend for 20 bucks. Okay. Uh, children are $5 for the whole weekend. Okay. Yep. This is a wonderful family event, and we're, yeah. we're happy to have been here for 10 years. Thanks. See you there. Do we have a, your page on Channel 7 or links on our website? Do you know that? I was thinking that I saw it there. Okay. okay. Right. Yes. Yes, I'm, we I'm do. sure it's there. Yeah. I, I thought I saw a poster it. and I think, <laughs> I think we're good. Thank you. And you can listen to Gene and I on the radio in the morning. 
And I All might right. mention that Tabitha <laughs> this year is, has joined us for our committee, and uh, she will be doing the parade. And that's at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. So I will be in the parade. Oh. <laughs> Directed the parade. Okay. She's nervous about it, but she'll do fine, and we'll have a wonderful parade on so I'm sure We will. Thank you very much. Good job. Thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Okay, thank you. Um, no more personal appearance. Next on our agenda is public comment. Anybody from the public wish to address the commission? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. We have one. Okay. Please, uh, I'll, I'll run through. I'm going to run through these uh, items here for public comment. Just set the ground rules if you don't mind. Uh, sorry, state your name and state your name and address, please. Richard Smith, and I requested last Tuesday for a personal appearance. Okay. For a personal appearance? Yes. And we're, we're here for public comment right now. Is that? I've requested with uh, Brian Gartland. I okay. talked to him last Tuesday. Okay. Where I requested a, a personal appearance. Mm, don't have it on our agenda. I apologize for that. What's and the nature of the personal appearance? I think, is this about your, your tickets at your building? It re, it's in regards to the revolt, you know, the, the uh, conditional use permit. Yeah. This is a legal matter, and so it's not, it's not, it's the reason he's not, has a personal appearance, and it really doesn't fit public comment. This is something that's in the court, and um, it's being handled in the court. Sir, is it in the court? So what? Sir, is it in is it in the court? Is it a is or is it a, a ticket or a municipal court matter that you're wanting to talk about? Well, I just want to make the commission aware of the situation. Though it seems to be getting uh, there's there's a great deal of money and and uh, use of manpower for a situation that uh, I don't think I deem necessary. Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, uh, Mr. Smith has not only tickets pending across the street, but in addition there is discussion before the county commission pertaining to these matters. And I just don't think this is the appropriate forum to take these matters up. I know at least in the matters across the street, he is represented by council as well. So. I don't think this is the right forum. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what he said. Uh, uh, at this point, we will not, uh, not going to entertain any discussion about legal matters in front of the commission if there's pending, so uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, then can I draw your attention to a situation on the, regarding the street in front of my house? You may do that. All right. I had showed a picture to this, is it Brian Gartland? When I met with him last Tuesday. The street between uh, F uh, Topeka and High, Finney Street between Topeka and High, was put in, I think, in 2000, 2001. Uh, there. There is a crack running full length of the street and it has grown considerably here in the last three years that it's become evident there. I stuck a ruler down there and the thing is nine inches deep and approximately six inches wide in one in in some sections of it there. Now I would if, if the city manager can and make use of four or five people going to county commission in regards to my other situation, I would certainly recommend that he direct attention there to street maintenance there, which I've talked to Herb. certainly is. I uh, talked to Herb about that, about that on Finney and and on uh, Topeka where the street is separating. 
and I asked if there was an underground river that ran underneath there because one of the houses in the neighborhood water actually is running out of their front yard. And no, that's down on that's down on Topeka. Right, and it's also on Finney. It comes through Finney, through but my backyard, and and to the house behind me. And, I, in and the, the city knows about that. that in, in, in that area, though, that uh, wherever they did under uh, bearing utilities, there, it's not directly involved in that area. Okay. So I don't I don't believe it's it's just been a street separation. That's but it's. It's, it's, it's been it's going on for, yes. for three, better than three years. I mean, you can see by the by the width of the crack that it just didn't happen overnight. Right, right. And it's brought to their it's been brought to their attention. All right, I appreciate that. What? Okay. Uh, I suppose can I talk to the I guess the commissioners personally regarding my uh, situation and complain against the city manager. <clears throat> Um, yeah, you certainly can reach out to the, to the commission one at a time. Uh, legal matters, we, we will re likely refrain to talk very detailed, so just... Well, it's not so much legal matter, but it's just the, the expense being involved here. Okay. The, the city is incurring. Okay. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Anybody else wish to address the commission? Being none, we'll move on to consent agenda. Uh, consent agenda was sent out with minutes from our previous meetings from July 19 and July 13. Um, I think 13. That doesn't sound right. Work session last week, which would have been the 19th and then the 13th. Yeah. Um, you have a chance to read through that. Any questions or comments on the minutes. If none, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move the consent agenda as presented be approved. Second. Okay, it's moved and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. <coughs> Next on our agenda is the 2017 budget. We've spent several uh, several meetings looking through the budget. Um, I think we uh, also talked about early on, we each gave some, some goals and priorities to, to staff that we would like for them to consider. And I think much of that has even been included in this budget. As it, as it stands uh, and during our last discussion, we had some positive new, that news out of valuation. So uh, that was, that allowed us to do uh, to proceed with a uh, minimal increase. The increase being primarily focused on preparations for uh, what it might entail for the senior center, uh, and that is a, a one mil increase that we're we're here for. Is any presentation or discussion from the staff at this point? No, sir. There's nothing changed. I did follow up and um, visit with Kevin, who's even here. Um, and I, when you asked me earlier, it, it, I was correct. Um, we're wanting, waiting to make sure that the commission approves the budget. Once that tells us what's happening in 2017, then we'll move forward with getting in earnest and have those discussions with um, the senior center. Okay. Any, anything else? We, any questions or comments from the commission? on our budget. I just want to commend staff for uh, when we started this process, I, I realized we didn't know, realize or know the, the valuation was going to go up, but I thought for sure we were looking at a three to four mil levy increase. And uh, yes, the valuation helped, but the main reason we ended up with a one mil increase was because of staff and how they they didn't I mean how they cut to the bone and um, I think they ought to be commended for it I agree and, and I just want to point out Mr. Mayor said you know 
this is partly you know because of the senior center. I think we looked into that carefully, and we said you know us taking it on, really us taking it on is crucial to the senior center existing. And so I think we made that decision and move and are working towards that with the hopes of being able to continue to provide the services for the folks in the community that use them. That's all I want to add. Okay. okay. There's no further questions on that. We'll move towards public hearing for the for the budget. We'll open up uh, the commission now for to receive public hearing or comment on the budget. Anybody wish to proceed, wish to address the commission on behalf or in, regarding the budget? Please state your name and address. My name is Lotto Slaughter Hernandez. I live at 1136 South Summit. I wasn't going to make a comment, but I understand at least what I heard today is that there, you plan to have a one mil levy increase. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm wondering why. Because of all the projects the city has that supposedly brings bringing in money, we have a tower that's supposed to be saving us so much money on electricity. We have a stadium that's supposed to be bringing in so much money. And th that's just naming a few. We're, we're taking on the senior citizens. As well I, I'm a senior citizen. Right, we're taking on the senior citizen building over there. Mm -hmm. That's why you got the one mil increase. Uh -huh. And you're doing what? You're adding to it? No, it was be because of funding and we're because of the, the situation they're in. Um, They've been self-supporting up to this yeah, point. Yeah, I know. They can't do it anymore. And they need so it'll close they need they're, they're not getting enough money from the state and the county. That's correct. correct. And we did this to, to <laughs> ensure that the seniors in El Dorado would have a senior center. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I've been up there several times, and I have never really felt welcome. I one time I did pay membership for years, but I, I never felt welcome. The only time I ever had anybody that I felt welcome was when they had the Thursday night, uh, I think the Thursday night dances, country mm -hmm. question. Or Saturday. Saturday? No. Thursday, okay. Thursday. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, maybe with us having more involvement now, we can help improve some of those things. Well, I don't know how long ago it's been, but I was one of those people that came up here and strongly supported the commission giving the senior citizen more support on it because at that time they were having a lot of expenses. Of course, they, there had also been an addition to the north, quite a good sized addition. And I, for one, was concerned because at that time I offered to provide all the cabinets, kitchen, and whatever they needed. And one of the senior citizens that seemed to have more influence than the board itself got them to refuse it. $4,000 worth of cabinets are still sitting in the storage place. Do you remember that, Herb? But I thought, you know, when you mentioned this today, I thought, well, And I appreciate your time. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Any other comments? Mayor, I may just make one more. Um, we want anyone to look at our budget that wants to. We try to make it available in a myriad of sources. We will, it's on, you can get it at the library. It's, we take a copy to the library. It'll be online. You can come to City Hall and look at ours anytime you want. So if anyone has any interest in it, um, this year's, last year's, next year's, we, 
we make them very, very available and try to get them to people anywhere they want to get them. Okay. And each one of us have a copy of it, so if anybody has a question, you can even seek out one of your commissioners. <coughs> uh, seeing nobody uh, approach the podium, I'll go ahead and close public hearing and move on with a motion. Ordinance number, please. S1350. Okay, entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that ordinance number S1350, an ordinance attesting to an increase in tax revenues for budget year 2017 for the city of El Dorado be approved and to approve the 2017 operating budget in the amount of $29,964,961, providing for an estimated mill levy of 48 mills and to certify the same to the county clerk. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? None. I'll have roll call. Commissioner Lewis? Yes. Commissioner Badway? Yes. Commissioner Wilkinson? Yes. Mayor Haynes? Yes. Commissioner Law? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> All right, we'll move on to the agenda for setting a public hearing date for a CDBG grant program. I think this is relative to the housing uh, efforts from yes, the housing committee that's that's been formulated and a continuation of uh, public due process to get ready for CD, CDBG community development block grants uh, for the community. Any Further questions or discussion on that? It was something we talked about at our work session as well. None. I think the recommendation is to set for August 15. And I believe that's an evening time. Is that right? There's a time not listed in our agenda. Yeah, it's in the motion, 6:30 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry. I just Did we not change the date of the question answer period? It was changed to August 4th. Mm -hmm. It was going to be next week, and now it's this Thursday. This Thursday at 6.30. Here. Here. Here at City Hall. <clears throat> and that's an informal... Let me, let me read aloud this background. I think okay. uh, I'll do a better job here of that. This city will be applying for the 2017 Community Development Block Grant Housing Program. The grant may be up to $400,000 and may be used for the following. Multifamily, single family, owner occupied, rental, rehabilitation, or demolition. Beginning August 2nd, 2016, the city will be accepting pre-applications to determine a target area and use of target area and use of funds. Holding a public hearing as part of the application process to apply for the grant. The grant deadline is August 31st. So we're going to spend some time uh, we, we got pre-application out right now, which is August 2nd through uh, the 15th or, or further on. Tell me and when that closes. 22nd. Uh, 22nd. So, yeah, there's so many dates. Yeah, Yeah, there are a lot of dates. That's why I kind of went after. We have sign language going on here. <laughs> I saw this and I deduced. Okay. And actually, Mayor, did you, Linda's come in. Do you just want to have her come up too? And so... Linda, do you have anything you want to add to that? part of the discussion. And, and without taking too much from the hearing, probably the more important work is the pre-application. Yes. Um, and so you yes. may want to just talk a little bit about yeah. that. Thank and you. that um, Linda Jolly with El Dorado, Inc. Uh, that's the piece of the puzzle that I did want to talk about. It's important that people within the community that have eligibility and interest in the grant can fill out an application. They can do that several ways. They can get a printed application at the engineering department or online at eldoks360eldorado.com. In either place, the application is online. It talks about eligibility. Eligibility is determined by, partially determined by income levels, and those income levels are there. 
uh, owner-occupied properties as well as landlords can apply for the program. And the piece of the puzzle that makes the pre-application important is trying to determine a target area. Uh, we are, this is a very competitive grant and we score more points if we take pre-applications and we know we have a sufficient amount of people interested in the target area that we set. We recognize that there's a lot of need for housing rehabilitation throughout the community. We know we can't do it all this first time, but it is the opportunity to get a start and then to continue in coming years to uh, target additional areas within the community. So anyone that has a lot of questions or any questions should come to the meeting August 4th. You can also call the engineering department at any time. You can call my office at any time, which would be 321-1485 or call the city at 321-9100 and ask for the engineering department. So that's my commercial for pre-applications. <laughs> we you talked one. about a target area. Do you, do you want to talk about the boundaries for anybody who's in has property in those areas? I mean, it's a large boundary now. It's We're trying to hone in on, on uh, some interested areas. Yes, um, the application also scores points when you make the biggest impact on your target area. So the largest area you want to have is 250, maybe 300 homes total. And to give you a sense of that, um, a block is an, an average square block is 10 homes, 10 to 12 homes. So you can see that it's about 20 to 22 square blocks uh, area. So there's a lot of those areas in our community. We're assuming that the application uh, and target area will be something that is south of 6th Street and potentially west of Maine. So that's a big area. So if you live in that area uh, and you're interested, be sure and continue to be Could be, but we could get a lot of applications in a concentrated area and choose it. Okay. So I mean, that map we got, it was, was high. east of high. High. Well, and even, I mean, today it's pretty much unknown mm -hmm. where it's going and so the only so that the only place cast in stone? No. Uh -uh, that was to show you what we've judged so well, far I've been lying to people <laughs> well I think that the only the only places that probably ruled out is north of 12th maybe and so it's about it's, it's about the age and condition of, of neighborhoods and I think that if an area gets a large concentration of pre-apps in, so a neighborhood wants to do a lot of work, that'll be something that you consider when you decide what neighborhood. And so, again, to Linda's point about impact of a neighborhood, the more work you get done in a neighborhood, the better it's gonna score. If you got, if you did our eight or 10 homes, throughout the city of El Dorado, it doesn't have as great an impact on a neighborhood. And so um, I think what, what you got the other day was just the, the portions that we have gotten rated, wasn't it? I think that's the area we felt we could, we would have the income requirements met the LMI where we know we have aged houses that need rehab and we had discussed the mailers going out to those areas where um, we could seek input from those areas that we thought we could get see the biggest impact. Okay. Well, if you're watching, dude, sorry I lied. Yeah. Well, those people are going to get direct mail. Yes. So the people on that map are going to get a direct mail, but it isn't necessarily locked in stone. And as you know, we have landlords that might have a fairly large portfolio and they might be willing to participate in the program. And when you look at all the addresses, they could be either in a concentrated area or a large area. We've, we've looked, we know we have some landlords that have a significant number of homes in the area that Nick's talking about. So, just, uh, okay. other questions? But we're anxious for the August 4th, and if 
people miss that meeting, call us because we'd yeah. like to see your pre-applications. <coughs> so, and they're pretty. The application itself is fairly simple to fill out. It's more just informational. So thank you. But we, thank you. But we need preapp. Preapp pre will help our application. So if you have any interest, fill it out. It doesn't mean that you're committed to it. Right. It's just a signal to the state of Kansas that um, that there's interest in the program in El Dorado. So there's there is interest. Contact El Dorado Inc. or the City Engineering, and, or uh, certainly attend the uh, public hearing that we're going to set here uh, momentarily. All right. I need a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move to set the public hearing for 6.30 p.m. on August 15, 2016 to be held to discuss applying for the 2017 small, or Kansas Small Cities CDBG program. Seconded. And that is going to be here in this room, right? Yes, sir. It's going to be in conjunction with your meeting. Okay. okay. Any further questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. Looking forward to having interested parties come to our next our next commission meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Linda and Inc. and the Housing Committee for their efforts and city staff for working on that's got a uh, tight time frame and has a lot of great opportunity in it. Um, next on our agenda would be the 2016 standard traffic ordinance updates I think we have chief to talk to us about that good evening chief Zeman over at the police department as you know we become we come before you every year to adopt STO and the ordinance STO is a standard traffic ordinance uh, this is printed by the League of Kansas municipalities basically what it is is a compilation of most popular traffic uh, laws that cities use in the state of Kansas. Uh, it's not an all-inclusive book of all the state statutes that have to do with traffic, but these are the most used. Uh, when we ask you to do this every year, we always talk about the changes in the, in the ordinances. Uh, this year, the major changes to the STO is a result of a Kansas Supreme Court case that was this year, State versus Rice, and it had to do with uh, uh, implied consent laws for breath alcohol tests. Where you arrest somebody for uh, suspected of DUI or, or drug driving. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, they uh, let me back up a little. KSA 2015 Supplement 8 1025 criminalizes the refusal to submit to or complete a test or test deemed consented to under KSA uh, 2015 8 1001 to determine the presence of alcohol or drugs. The court held that regardless of implied consent laws, an individual has an expectation of privacy in his or her bodily substances and thus breath, blood, and urine tests remain a search under the Fourth Amendment. As a general rule, warrantless searches are per se unreasonable. One exception to the general rule is when an individual gives his or her free and voluntary consent. Under the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendments, an individual's consent may not be coerced. When an individual faces criminal charges, if he or she withdraws his or her consent to a search, the individual's consent is no longer freely and voluntarily given. While the court found that the state does have compelling interests it seeks to protect through KSA 8-1025, the statute is not narrowly tailored to serve the state's interests and thus is facially unconstitutional. Well, in response to that decision, they had to amend or remove some subsections to the sections in STO that have to do with driving while under the influence of alcohol, drugs, or the uh, breath or blood test. Uh, so what they did, and, and I can run down them really quick, and if you want any of the 
real technical explanations you might have to turn to Mr. Murphy, but section 30 that has to do with driving under the influence of uh, intoxicating liquor or drugs penalties, they took subsection H2A that had the wording that the Supreme Court deemed unconstitutional. In section 30.1, subsection M2B, that has to do with driving a commercial motor vehicle under the influence of intoxicating liquor or drugs. They took that same language out of that subsection. Section 32, subsection C2 has been removed. That had to do with preliminary breath test. Uh, preliminary breath test is in under another section number, but there's no traffic infraction involved with that any longer because of this Supreme Court decision. In section 30, Point two point one was removed in its entirety, and that's a refusal to submit to alcohol or drug testing. Uh, when this court decision came out, we've got many forms that we have to fill out when you arrest somebody for suspicion of DUI. The state had to change all these forms to reflect these changes as a result of the Supreme Court ruling. I anticipate there may be a remedy on down the road, maybe in the next uh, legislative sessions. I don't know if they plan on rewriting some of this to fix it or not, but uh, the way I read this right now, there's no penalty if uh, criminally if you refuse to take a test. Uh, there are administrative hearings, which I believe are civil, aren't they, Mr. Murphy? They're done through the Department of Revenue, so that's a separate action, uh, I think. And that, that has to do with the surrendering, surrendering of your license if you fail the test uh, or, or refuse it. So I think, I think that civil process will still be there. But to assign a criminal charge or a fine or both to... Uh, because you refuse a test, they've taken that out, they found that unconstitutional. So, any questions on that? I know it's Would you like to do layman? Yeah, I was headed towards the layman's explanation now. I know that we've gone through if the- you get, If you get stopped, current, before this Supreme Court, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, before this, this Supreme Court ruling, in Kansas, if they asked you to submit to blood alcohol, mm -hmm. you had to. If you didn't, it was a charge. Mm -hmm. There was a law that you had to submit. A criminal charge. The Constitution says we are all not subject to unreasonable search and seizure. So that has gone away. You don't get charged criminally for that today if you refuse. However, your license is is not guaranteed by the Constitution. It is a right. And so if you tell them, no, I don't want to submit, <coughs> you're still subject in Kansas. The penalty is a year with no it's privilege. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. Right. And so, right. And so you get, um, you lose your license for a year, I think. It depends on whether you've had prior failures, it depends uh -huh. on the level of your, uh, uh, not if it's a refusal, it just depends on the priors. And so it's, it's still, there's still penalties if you fail to submit to those tests in a different court. And Failure to submit to those tests, how does that change I mean, uh, how does that change the officer's uh, procedure in terms of, of ticketing, if you will, or, or with, with the uh, driving under the influence? Law? How, yeah. do you, how do you know, then, I guess? Well, and, it, and, and number one, we don't, we've never relied solely on that breath test to begin with. It's, it's all the other factors going up before the stop, the sobriety test that you do at the scene. Uh, we've had plenty of convictions on people that refuse to take tests altogether. Okay. So, uh, so that part doesn't change. There's a lot of other things involved than just the breath or blood tests. So. Okay. Any other questions on that part? 
what's the section 175-1? Yeah, I was going to come to that next. Okay. The only other change in uh, the STO was compression release engine brake <coughs> system. But they added that language to the definition section. Uh, just another terminology for jake braking or engine braking that the semis do so uh, they've added that language compression release engine braking system <coughs> and that's all we have on the changes of sto okay. all right any further questions from the commission Twenty-four. Why? G twelve twenty. Twelve twenty. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I move that ordinance number G twelve dash twenty, and ordinance amending section ten point oh four point oh ten of the El Dorado Municipal Code pertaining to traffic and referencing the standard traffic ordinance for Kansas City's edition twenty sixteen be passed and approved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, being done, we'll move to roll call. Commissioner Badway? Yes. Commissioner Wilkinson? Yes. Mayor Haynes? Yes. Commissioner Locke? Yes. Commissioner Lewis? Yes. Right. Motion passes. Thank you. We'll move to uh, Uniform Public Offense Code. Okay, UPOC, similar to the standard traffic ordinance, is again a compilation of the most common misdemeanor charges that cities and Kansas use. Again, it's not an all-inclusive list of things we can charge people with, it's just the most common. Uh, this book also is written and published by the League. Uh, and we have some changes to UPOC this year. Uh, under the smoking definition, the definition for a medical facility has been added to remove and any psychiatric hospital license under KSA 753307B and amendments there too. Due to the fact that KSA 753307B was repealed and the detention for juvenile correction facility officer or employee has been removed. Section 3.2 of ST or UPOC, uh, subsection B2, battery against a law enforcement officer. They've added the language, the definition of attorney has been amended to include city attorney, assistant city attorney, city prosecutor, and assistant city prosecutor. Although these positions are not listed in KSA 21-54-13, the editor found them to be appropriate under the general intent of the statute. There was a passage of four bills this legislative session that have resulted in a need to make some amendments into UPOC. House Bill 2501 amends Section 3.12C, Breach of Privacy, to include the following parties as exempt from prosecution for violation of an individual's privacy. And those are a provider of an interactive computer service uh, for content provided by another person, a radio common carrier as defined by KSA and amendments there too, and a local exchange carrier or telecommunication, telecommunications carrier as defined by KSA and amendments there too. Senate Bill 133 amends Section 5.8, Purchase, Consumption, or Possession of Alcoholic Liquor or Cereal Malt Beverage by a Minor to provide immunity from prosecution for one or two persons under 21 if they are providing support to another person needing emergency medical services and law enforcement assistance. Immunity is provided if the one or two persons request medical assistance on another person's behalf if they reasonably believe that that person is in need of assistance and they are cooperative with emergency medical services personnel and law enforcement officers in providing that medical assistance. 
House Bill 2462 amends 6.1, the theft statute, amending the definition of felony theft of property or service from a value of 1,000 to a value of 15, I'm sorry, yeah, 1,000 to a value of 1,500. It is important to note there are other crimes for which 1,000 remains a value of which the crime becomes a felony. HB 2462 only amended the definition for theft and made no changes to other crimes. And finally, HB 2436 amends section 1014, operation of a motor boat or sailboat by excluding any person operating a sailboat that does not have a motor and has an overall length of 16 feet, seven inches or less, while such a person is enrolled in an instructor-led class from the requirements of 10.14. Probably won't be dealing with that last one too much around here. Unless there's a big flood and mm -hmm. before we annex the lake. Okay. East Park. Yeah, there you go. Davis Pond. Okay. What's this really saying in the Senate Bill 133 about minors and support of another person needing emergency medical? What's the What's the, the layman's terms and, of that? What, what, what they're wanting to do is they don't want to, let's say that um, someone, some people not old enough to drink are at a party. Someone gets too drunk. Their friends are worried about them being needed, gonna die, something bad's happening. This gives those people that call police or call an ambulance immunity from prosecution for MIP, minor in possession, minor in consumption, MIC. Mm -hmm. It gives those kids a, a, a get rid of a deterrent to calling to save their friend or to aid their friend. Okay. And I absolutely see that as a good thing. Uh, I think mm -hmm. a person's well being trumps the MIP charge any day of the week. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further questions or comments on the on Uniform Public Defense Code? Uh, so you none. I do you have a ordinance. Ordinance. Twelve twenty one. I move that ordinance number twelve twenty one and ordinance amending section nine point zero four point zero one zero of the Elder Edel Municipal Code pertaining to public offenses and referencing the Uniform Public Offense Code, edition 2016, be passed and approved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? And we'll move to roll call. Commissioner Wilkinson? Yes. Mayor Haynes? Yes. Commissioner Locke? Yes. Commissioner Lewis? Yes. Commissioner Batley? Yes. And Mayor, this doesn't pertain to this agenda item, but Tabitha said I would be remiss if I didn't plug our national night out again tomorrow night from uh, 5 to 8 p.m. So we'd love to have you all out. East Park, free hot dogs, hamburgers, prizes, a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Chief. <coughs> all right, we'll move to setting here a date for hearing date for Item number seven on our agenda is to set a hearing date for project number 473. Yes, Mayor and Commission, this is uh, paving the alley between Locust and Cave Springs Avenue um, for Walnut River Brewing. The project is complete and we're asking you to set a hearing for August 15th, 2016 to spread the assessments. Okay. Any further questions from the Commission? None, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move to set a public hearing at 6.30 p.m. on August 15, 2016 to be held for the purpose of considering the pur proposed assessment of cost of Project 473 and further direct individual mailings to each of the others liable for the special assessment. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We'll add another uh, public hearing to our meeting agenda on the 15th. Thank you.
the alley that's by the brewery, right? Correct. Walnut yeah. River Brewing uh, petitioned the city to improve that alley and yep. uh, its files. Okay. On uh, item number eight is new business. Anything any new business commissioners wish to bring in front of the meeting? Shall I start? Sure. Okay. Um, vote tomorrow. Polls open at 7 a.m., close at 7 p.m. Please get out and vote. Um, Airport Advisory Committee meets this week on Thursday, so no update from them. Uh, the CVB met two weeks ago, and basically we discussed the drums across Kansas and how successful that event was. Uh, the rec department met last week and they have finished up their summer activities and are gearing up for their fall activities. So things are going well there also. Do we have yet any um, figures from the drums on what, uh, or anything that we can, re I don't want to report anything that's not finalized, but. We, we do have them, but I don't have them tonight. Okay. But it, but I'll, ha I'll bring him next time. It'd be good to. Or have Jen come. It'd be good to talk about, yeah, uh, okay. how that turned out in front of the commission. And uh, I may mention, can we talk about soccer? Could I mention that to the commission? Sure. Um, several years ago, man, I don't know, a while back, the commission, um, and wanted staff to work with the YMCA on seeing if we can find common ground. And so rather than splitting our children on programs um, to the detriment of everybody, let's see if we couldn't find some uh, common ground and do some programming together. This fall, we think it'll be the first time it's going to be a city YMCA soccer league and so um, if this is going to be the first product that's actually come to fruition from those discussions and that work and so okay. pretty excited about it good and i would just say to our staff that worked on that thank you because i know that that was i mean that's been a big project and a lot of long conversation uh, with a lot of different moving pieces between our branch here and Wichita Metro and you know kind of what we've done or what we've done in the past traditionally so I know that wasn't an easy quick thing so congratulations and thank you yeah I think that I think that over this period and it may be independent of these discussions but in addition to Wichita Metro has kind of discovered that El Dorado's different. different. And so, yay. And so we're going to have a great okay. first step. Right. I think it's going to, I think it's going to be wonderful. Um, maybe the only big difference is they do think they're going to play all the games at the middle school on um, our official turf. Uh, we'll still use ours and have them ready for practices and anything else they want. But we, we do think they're going to play games at the middle school. Try to get that done. Okay. I'll go, I'll go next. Uh, El Dorado Inc. didn't have a meeting last week. And uh, I just want to remind everybody about the CDBGH program. And uh, the meeting on August 4th, the informational meeting at 630. And the next meeting on August 15th at 6.30 for the public hearing. And uh, also heard that uh, cell phone tower on 11th Street is banging again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the neighbors are starting to complain about it. I'll get it. Yeah. Scott, you're going to take care of that for me? It's pretty loud this time. Uh, do we know why they have a chain on it? Mm, I think they told me, but I don't recall. Um, Okay. Well, we had that yeah. win the other day. I think it knocked it loose. Knocked it loose. Just, okay. It's, it's getting loud again. And don't forget to vote tomorrow. Okay. 
Anything else? Prairie Trails hadn't had a meeting and um, don't have anything to report on that. Other than I've had continue to have uh, good comments on our new greens. I think they're getting a lot more play. That's good. And I'll echo the rest of the commission about getting out and vote because bottom line, if you don't vote, you don't have any right to bitch about anything. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just reiterate what Kurt kind of plugged there a little bit ago and encourage folks tomorrow night at five o'clock, correct, at East Park, National Night Out. I would just encourage anyone in the community, take the kids, go down yourself. After but, you vote. After you vote. <laughs> uh, but make sure and take advantage of that. I know they've put some work into making that a fun evening, so I encourage folks to do that. And then I had a meeting uh, not related to the city with Union Pacific about a week ago. And in that conversation, she found out that I was on the commission and wanted me to relay the message. They're trying to work with cities across the state to encourage them, if possible, with the equipment that we have when it comes to uh, snow and ice and plowing. If she said most cities lift the plow over the tracks, but if it's able to plow over the tracks to do so, I can't imagine us lifting. And we might already be doing that, but she just said that they're kind of putting a big push to make sure that if they are a city that lifts it, to go ahead and just plow, you know, over the track. And if for some reason it causes any damage to just let them know and they'll get it fixed right away but i said i'd relay that okay i have the name of the gal i'll send you her information just okay. if anyone had any further questions but and i'll share i'll yeah. i'll let brad know but i think i i mean we're not we wouldn't lift very much yeah um, and that's what i thought because i've never noticed it i've never noticed it i would just share that for what it's worth and that's I, all i have yep Okay. Uh, I'll share a few things. Uh, Commissioner Lewis already talked about Elbert Inc. not having a meeting and then the CDBG grant stuff we've talked about earlier today. Um, Main Street, uh, I'll do a plug here towards the end. The Frontier Western's coming up, so uh, that's a Main Street event. Hope everybody can, can join that. Uh, there was a REAP meeting uh, last week. Last week? Um, we continued the discussion about regionalism. Uh, we toured the uh, innovation. We held our meeting at WSU, and after the meeting, we toured the innovation campus, which is a pretty impressive uh, uh, effort that's going on at WSU uh, and learning a little bit about the businesses that are locating on campus, what that means for. So, and we had a had a Dr. Bardo talked about that. Which is pretty impressive. And then we uh, talked a little bit more about the city to city trip, which I've been invited to go on. It's in September to Nashville. I'm looking forward to that that trip to see how Nashville and its uh, its regionalism efforts and how that maybe could translate to to here and what we can learn from that. That's what was going on. A couple other things. Uh, we have any update on the disc golf process? Where we are with that? We're at the RFP or RQ process on that still. So. Have you mailed them out yet? We have not. Okay. You anticipate that? The goal was August 5th for the response. Just haven't got, got to that. But. Okay. Okay. Um, the next one, I guess, is as we think about that and look forward, we and we through the budget. I guess the commission could start thinking about what our next steps and what we want to do about our parks and rec master plan. We made that investment. I don't want to see it on a shelf. We've got to figure out uh, what it is. So um, I think we've had one work session on it. Maybe it's time to, to do it again. And, and I guess I would ask the commission if it's appropriate or they'd like to have that in joint with the rec committee and we can kind of hammer out together what some of those priorities might be. We've kind of done it separately, but does it make sense to, to get together and talk through that? That was going to be one of my questions to you as well. 
um, the uh, staff took the rec committee last week asked about a sales tax it seems like the most obvious way to fund it um, while supportive um, they had one member that would that really wanted to see a, a spreadsheet or a table we're going to spend this, this is what's going to cost um, we don't have that yet because really not, those decisions haven't been made and so it's, it's kind of a uh, chicken or an egg um, it's a big plan you can spend lot it could spend lots and lots of money and so um, maybe that is maybe your suggestion is an appropriate um, idea that you have a work session tie it with the committee and see if together you all come to a consensus and move it forward because that's um, that's what Kevin and I'll do as well it's uh, I don't think the Commission had any intent of putting it on the shelf and so you got to figure out what you what and how yeah and so there needs to be more discussion so if you'd like we'll do that I would definitely welcome to bring the two together okay Kendra you're on that committee so Okay, let's do it. Um, I guess work it into our work session schedule in the next okay. few months, and and uh, let's keep that keep that discussion going. All right. <coughs> anything else? Don't have anything else? Did Did you? Have, was there a break meeting? Did you go to a break meeting? I did not make it to a break okay. meeting. I went to the re meeting. Okay. Break. Oh, we did have uh, city managers we did uh, have that. round table last week. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I did get the opportunity to welcome some city managers from the region and share some fun facts. Uh, so they met here. I was glad to host that. That was through the WSU School of Public Administration. Uh -huh. um, but Bragg, I did not make a Bragg meeting. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for that reminder. The 23rd of August, Greg will be here in El Dorado. We're hosting him here, so and that'll be another city, great uh, session. No. Oh, at the, at the stadium. At the stadium. The, yeah. And again, that back to regionalism, and and that's Greg is kind of the, the being driven by Mayor Longwell, isn't that? Yes. Or, and so, um, I, I like because it's more than just talking about regionalism, it's putting into action and our interactions with the city of Wichita have always been very supportive, especially with Mayor Longwell. I mean, he wrote letters on our um, yeah. application for- he's, he's, He has voiced a, uh, a great voice of re regionalism and has direct written letters of support as we make application and compete for, for uh, businesses to locate here work from the state so I, it's a good partnership absolutely okay uh, city managers report um, the two the two things I wanted to report was why soccer and then the WSU managers and so we've covered those um, one thing I guess I think given what's kind of going on in some portions of the country um, in, in interactions between um, people of color and police. Um, you may hear about the um, officers getting training to de-escalate a situation. We, we've been doing that training. Is, yeah, Kurt's still here. We've been doing that training for years. Um, yeah, we, we can get in a fight, but the, it, never is it going to be a good outcome and so we want to we want to reduce tensions in a stop and and uh, and so things that you hear about other people starting to do we've been doing um, I, our, we've been wearing body cameras for a decade maybe so, nine. so five so not a decade then or seven years and so again to protect our citizens and to protect our policemen. Often it's a he said, she said, and when you got it on tape, it sure makes the he said, she said a lot different when everybody can watch what happened. And so um, 
we don't we don't want to get into confrontations. Um, want to keep our seats, streets and community safe, um, but want to do it in a friendly manner. And so our night out tomorrow is just a reflection of that same that same philosophy. Um, having police officers out at ball games and riding bikes and walking again. We want those one-on-one -on -one contacts. We want people to know the police officers, to be, feel comfortable visiting with them about problems. And, um, and so hopefully we never have um, someone ambushing policemen in El Dorado. Yeah. At least not as a reaction to something that we've done wrong or believe we've done wrong. But so we've, we've been doing that, and I'm proud of that, and we'll continue to do that. And uh, don't, don't want to think about us and them. It's us. And it's certainly true with our citizens and our police in blue. Okay. And that's all I had, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, item 2, item 10, not 2. Item 10 on our agenda is the uh, executive session for the purpose of discussing legal matters, land acquisition, and matters related to non-elected personnel. That's got all three in there. It's going to be a full meeting. Um, should we start with an, an hour? I, well, how about quarter after, and then maybe we can. Maybe some of them won't take too long. Okay. So until uh, this is eight. 15, right? Mm -hmm. I move to recess into an executive session for the purpose of discussing legal matters, land acquisition, and matters pertaining to non elected personnel, and to reconvene the regularly scheduled meeting in the City Commission room at 8 15 p.m. Second. The case been moved and seconded. Any further questions, comments? In favor say aye. 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 We will convene into executive session until 8 15. Thank you.